Hi there. So, um, yeah, today we're we're living and working in a more and more sort of technological um, environment nowadays. And in many ways, we're becoming more and more sort of disconnected from nature. Um, I mean, even even today with my my virtual background, it's not not quite real. Um, and at the same time, we seem to be seeing a quite a sharp increase in mental health problems um, and, and issues that, that seems to have been brought into focus even more through the last couple of years of the pandemic. So we just wanted today to explore, you know, how our environment affects us and what we can do about improving it. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about today in um, sort of biophilia and biophilic design. So um, we're joined today by Mark Brown from TG Escapes, um, someone, that, someone that we've known at Barker for a, for a while now. Um, but for everyone else, Mark, can you can you just sort of introduce yourselves? Tell us who who are you and uh, what's your involvement in this? Sure. Hi, Robert. Hi, everybody else. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, we're TG Escapes. We're a uh, provider of timber frame modular uh, buildings. Uh, we work primarily in the education sector, but do an awful lot of work in sport and leisure as well. Um, and we've been in the business for about almost twenty years. It's our twenty year twentieth uh, anniversary next year. Um, and right from the beginning, we've we've been a business which believes in um, uh, the, the the value of sustainable construction, and timber is a key part of that. And that's really what's led us down this path into understanding more about biophilic design. So, so in a nutshell, what what is biophilia or what is biophilic design? Well, bi biophilia is a, one of the, a word that a lot of people may not have heard of before, but it's something that everybody will be very familiar with. Um, the, the word actually is derived from the Greek, so bio meaning life and uh, philia, which which kind of often translated as, as um, friendship or affection. So it's kind of love of love of um, um, uh, love of um, life. So it's so it's it, it, it's it's I, I translate as love of nature. Um, and it's been it's been in our designs in our, in our in our construction designs since civilization pretty much began. If you think about Greek and Roman architecture, you'll you'll probably think about those open courtyards with pillars and with with plants growing in them. Um, and that's really that's really the first example of of designing buildings with nature in mind, with nature as a part of it. Um, and that's very much what biophilia is all about. It's how to incorporate nature into our built environment. I guess in those days, people didn't understand the science of mental health and, and they were doing those sort of designs for other reasons, perhaps to mimic their, you know, their, their previous environments. But um, uh, Obviously, in today's environments where we are so uh, our, our built environment is so different from from nature, the, the lines are, are much clearer that perhaps we're trying to blur them a little bit more. But I mean, how, how did you how did you get involved in this? What's your role at TG Escapes and your sort of expertise in in the in the area of, the, of, the, of design? Yeah, so I think it, we because we build with timber and inherent in our designs are floor to ceiling windows and doors, we use sun pipes, we're, we're very, very, our, our buildings are flooded with natural light. And we also design them so that we provide a covered walkways, it's particularly helpful in schools because we found that um, they, they allow free flow access from the inside to out. Um, we also lose, use a lot of timber cladding, not exclusively, we use a mix of cladding, but, but timber timber's a big part of of, of how the, the buildings are, are, are designed and, and they and they look very natural. And I think that's what led us into trying to understand um, how biophilic design principles actually impact people and impact the people using the buildings that we design. And what we what we know, uh, d d biophil biophilia kind of co covers a, a two, two broad areas. Um, there's those direct experiences, which is about natural light, air, air quality is an important part of it, water, plants, animals, natural landscapes, and those indirect experiences, which are images of nature, sort of use of natural materials, um, stim simulating nature, using naturalistic shapes. So whilst, our, whilst um, you know, our buildings are use natural materials and provide lots of natural light and access the outdoors, um, that, that sort of led us down this path of trying to understand how biophilia, how biophilic principles work. So is um, you're talking about images versus actual materials. Is it, I mean, what's the what's the sort of the science behind this? How does 
how, how does um I, I guess we all kind of recognize when we go for a walk in the country or sit by a lake or go to the seaside you know we perhaps feel a bit de-stressed and relaxed but what what's actually going on in our in, in our minds or in our in our physical beings that actually stimulates this and how does that translate to the built environment yeah so good good question uh, the um the 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 principle of of, of biophilic design is and, and it was there was um there's been a few people written about this um rachel kaplan was was one that suggested that nature can provide a restorative effect um uh after mental fatigue and it's known as the biophilia hypothesis and there's lots of there's lots of research done around this and, and lots of papers written um and and basically what it what it says is that human beings you know we were we 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 came onto this earth living in nature, so living in caves surrounded by trees. So somewhere deep in our brain, there's this there's this natural na natural desire to be amongst nature, to see natural shapes. So when we when we're when we're surrounded by natural materials or we're seeing natural shapes or, or we've got views of nature, our brain kind of subconsciously relaxes. Um, and and it and it creates quite a different state, and that that's really the principle of of how of how biophilia um, kind of works, and and what the reason why we think it's really important is that you're seeing a huge mental health crisis, especially amongst young people um, post pandemic. You're seeing a massive impact in technology. You know, again, post pandemic, we're seeing much greater use of screens, so people working at home. Um, so our modern day lifestyles have become much more disconnected from nature than perhaps they should be. Um, uh, Richard Louvre coined the term nature deficit disorder. So our belief is that, is that the more we can build nature back into the, 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 our, our everyday life, the better it is for all of us. And there's some very strong research around this. There's a study um, that shows that um, children who grew up in, uh, in greener surroundings have up to 55% less risk of developing mental health issues. So what, what, what our philosophy is, is that, is that we've got a modern lifestyle, which is quite disconnected, quite technology based, quite indoors. So anything we can do to create access to the outdoors, to connect, um, to connect occupants to nature has to be a good thing. Yes, yeah, so, and you mentioned um, just there about natural materials, obviously timber being, being an obvious one. Um, but also potentially introducing plants and those sorts of things into into a space. Um, but you also were talking about images and things. So is is it possible that a, a, you know a picture on the wall of a of, of a natural scene can be effective as well as um, sort of three D you know real 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 materials like like timber or plants? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, this, there's um, a, a report that's worth checking out by Terrapin Bright Green, um, and they, they they looked into this and, and and identified that just seeing fractals in the built environment, in the carpet design, in wallpaper shades, um, triggers the brain. So so just seeing those shapes can have an impact as well. So so there are there are lots of things that you can do. Um, we have. Uh, Obviously, we, 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 when we're producing our, our, our screens, our windows, you need you need uh, window manifestations to 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 as a safe safety feature. Um, and we just we just designed a little a tree design into those into those um, into those safety manifestations. And and just just having trees there that as the occupants walk past, they even subconsciously notice. We think even small things like that could have an effect. So yeah, absolutely. Um, the way you, the way you design the shapes of the spaces inside, the way you use um, designs and images inside, can make a big difference. Yeah, fantastic. And, and so, what are the um, other than putting some plants and, and using timber in a building? I mean, if you're looking at perhaps, um, we can perhaps talk about um, new build versus retrofit as, as well in, in a second. But just thinking about a typical um, office environment or a typical classroom environment, what are the kind of easy wins that you would typically um, sort of suggest would be a, a, some good things that, you, that most people could do in, in to, to incorporate some of these principles into their environment? 
Yeah, I mean, you make a point about it's, it's a good point about the difference between existing buildings and new buildings. But but in, in principle, in, in both cases, there are there are three um, there are three core ways to incorporate biophilic design principles. There's the nature in the space. So that's bringing sunlight in a uh, fresh airflow, uh, pot plants, you know, bringing pot plants into a room is is, is, is not a difficult thing to do. Green walls, uh, natural living walls, aquariums, that sort of thing. So that's bringing nature actually into the space. The second one is nature analogues, and that's that's those the shapes that I was talking about. So patterns and colours rem reminiscent of natural forms, um, not using timber, um, nature photography using stone. And then the third thing is the nature of the space. And that's where if you're designing new buildings, you can you can create things like uh, secluded nooks. Um, uh, you can create window seats that people can sit in and stare out of the window. Um, wide open spaces meandering corridors um, you can you can design there's there's an interesting project going on at the moment um, in derby the dfe pathfinder group have have a biophilic school in, in 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 construction at the moment and the principle of that school is they use pavilions they don't use a single building. they're using pavilions for different parts of the schools so they have a classroom pavilion they have a, a canteen pavilion a sports pavilion and and they're all separate buildings, so the so the students have to walk outside into nature to move from one building to the other. So that's where the nature of the space can help people reconnect with with the natural world. Yes, yeah, I mean that's that's great, and uh, it's certainly um, we're actually refurbishing our offices at the moment in uh, in Essex, and, and 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 we're trying to incorporate some of these features our, ourselves into into the designs. It's going to be really interesting to see, you know, what the what the sort of feedback and impact of that has in terms of you know some of the materials that we're looking to use you know, even though we're in a fairly modern office building um, we're looking at trying to incorporate maybe some timber screens and um, some green walls some planting um, and, and looking at the sort of a natural palette of colors rather than perhaps um, what traditionally might have been a slightly starker more modern kind of corporate office look um, to see how that see how that affects um, the way people feel in the office and, and, and levels of levels of stress and, and productivity and things. Um, so it would be, be interesting to see how this all works out. Um, and, and interesting, and it just, as I say, it doesn't take much. And actually, there's a lot of evidence. There's there's um, uh, there's a, a Oslo University Hospital did some research and they found that hospital patients had views of trees required fewer pain meds than those that, that just looked out onto a brick wall. Um, there's a there's a big development that's that opened last year, um, the Sky Garden at Chelsea and Westminster Hospital, and um, there they've created this amazing space full of plants um, because they believe it will actually have a positive impact on stress levels and, and enhance recovery. So there's some there's some quite big investments in this space um, to, 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 to because because of the impact on people's overall well-being. Yeah, we've seen a big, um, a, a big in increase in interest in um, air quality as well, um, particularly which I know is part of part of this. Um, certainly in in the education space, um, it's been a, a specific program for through the Department for Education is issuing CO2 sensors as part of the yeah. um, COVID response. Um, but I think even wider than that, you know, um, having that access to sort of fresh air um, and and perhaps air improvement, air quality improvements through the use of uh, plants, I presume, in, in, a, in a building can actually um, have, a, have a positive effect as well. So, yeah, really interesting. Um, I mean, just I'm just thinking about my um, the way that the, the, the meta universe and all these things that we hear about um, and my, my virtual background again, is it, is it, is it conceivable that, that kind of virtual environments could be part of the solution to this ultimately, or is that almost going to cause a bigger problem than and, and disconnect us further from the nature that we're kind of trying to get back to in the first place? That's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't have any, any evidence one way or the other. My feeling is um, that it would probably exacerbate the problem. I think images of nature, it, it's the, the way that this works is that if you, the way, the way our eyes, when we're focusing on screens, which we're doing all the time, our, our eyes, um, the, the muscles get, get quite constricted. And, and one of the key reasons why a biophilic principle helps is because it encourages people to look up and look around. And that very uh, physical movement actually relaxes
relax, relaxing effect on on the brain and, and on the overall stress levels. So so I think it would be difficult to recreate that virtually. Um, the, the other, another another um, uh, example is there was a, a great study um, which looked at timber classroom. It, it, it looked at the heart rates of children in a timber classroom and compared them to those in a, in a, in a traditional classroom. And it found that over the course of the day, the children had eight and a half thousand less heartbeats. So, you, you know, this is something which is which was therefore an indication it's moving, removing stress. So actually being in the environment constantly is, is what's important. It, it's a bit difficult to give people a quick taste of, of nature in a virtual way, I think. I think it's got to be, you know, there's got to be, it's got to be something which is which is real and we feel part of it. And I guess part of that is around we've all been told we should be taking screen breaks and all those sorts of things. And it's about moving your, your physically moving your eyes away from away from screens, focusing on things at, diff in, at different focal lengths. And and that, that's part of the so there's, there's a physical and a, and a mental aspect to this as well. Um, by the by the sound of it, I mean it's really interesting to hear some of the science behind it because I kind of understood from a from a design side some of the some of the features that you've described in terms of using spaces and light and, and air quality and and design, um, but never really understood sort of why why it happened. So it's been really really interesting to hear that those sort of ideas. Um, in terms of kind of practical advice for people, I um, mean you've mentioned um, a few. Um, a few studies and resources and things, um, and which we'll, we'll hopefully collect some links and publish those with the um, with the video at the end. Is are there any other sort of go to resources or organisations that are um, can, uh, that you're aware of that could give people a steer on ways to sort of take this forward in their own in their own spaces? There are, um, yes, that there are, and, and it, a Google search will, will show them up. Um, but there, there's 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 a, a a number of research studies, and there are uh, a number of uh, architects and consultants that that have a great deal of experience in this space. Um, and and if you're building, you know, if you're creating a new building, then then you know that expertise is is obviously invaluable. But but it, you know, doing something as simple as bringing plants in into rooms, but the plants in classrooms have been proven to. Um, improve improve performance by ten to fifteen percent in in one recent study. And that's a, that was um, a study by Human Spaces that's worth checking out. And there's um, there's a, a a project in the states. Um, they, they, it's called a plant in every classroom. Um, and and they, they claim that just forty seconds of viewing a plant helps ease stress and improve focus and attention. And there's numerous studies out there that show that uh, that that, that uh, larger windows affects um, outcome and performance, views of nature. Um, so yeah, there's plenty out there that, that demonstrates that, that there's, there's lots of evidence that this, that this has a big impact, but it doesn't have to be a design of a whole new building. Just bringing plants in can, can, can make a big difference. The classic uh, don't don't let perfection be the enemy of good sort of thing. So we can all make some steps towards these things. And, um, you know, you might be in a, a situation where you have got the uh, the blank sheet of paper and, and, and can use some of these principles from the ground up. But actually, like you say, incorporating any of these features is going to make an incremental change and an improvement. So, um, you know, baby steps can often be um, a, a good way forward and, and better than doing doing nothing at all. So, you know, we found the same with installing, you know, good quality LED lighting in, into classrooms. Is is natural lights the best? But even even there, that sort of white light is is shown to improve um, uh, sort of educational outcomes and those sorts of things. So, um, we've been aware of many of these principles for for a while. But it's it's just nice to understand some of the some of the wider. Um, applications and also some of the science behind it. So, Mark, it's been really useful chat. Um, thanks for taking the time. Appreciated it. And um, yeah, we look forward to um, working with you again on some other schemes. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And um, yes, likewise.